Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Today in this quick video we'll learn how to create a Linux Mint bootable USB drive as well as how to install Linux Mint on your PC or laptop. This is gonna be a complete full step-by-step -step guide for the beginners. We're gonna be downloading and installing the latest Linux Mint versions. This is gonna be an updated tutorial on how to install Linux Mint. I already have a few tutorials how to install Linux Mint and other Linux distros on PC or laptop. So if you're interested, make sure to go ahead and check them out. I'm gonna put a link in the description. But this is gonna be an updated version and hopefully it will still be helpful to you and cover all your questions. But before we start, if you're new to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button. Also, if you find this video helpful, give it a like. And if you have any comments or questions, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer your questions and help you if I can. But nevertheless, without further ado, let's get started. I have already done another video about how to install Linux Mint on my computer, but it was a while ago and now there is a new version released, so I decided to go ahead and do another video on this topic. So hopefully it will be helpful for you guys. And maybe there is some question that I'm going to cover in this video more than I did in other videos. But anyway, it will be pretty similar and updated. Okay, so the first step, what you need to do, you need to download the ISO for the Linux Mint image. And for that, you just got to open up any browser, then go to the search field and type Linux Mint, then press enter. Any search browser should bring you to the official website, which is linuxmint.com. So just got to press on it. When you open up Linux Mint website, as you can see, the current version is Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria. This is the latest version right now, as of August 2023. There's going to be new versions coming out later, but this is the current version right now. So as you can see, there is download instructions here. So if you would like to read all the instructions, it will tell you how to download it, how to create a live boot, how to do the installation. It is pretty detailed instructions. But if you want to go ahead and watch this video to the end, we're going to go through all the steps so you don't have to read through those instructions. And I appreciate it very much. Okay, so like I said, first you need to download the ISO image of Linux Mint. For that, you just got to click on this download button. And as you can see here, there are a few different editions of Linux Mint. One of the most popular one is Cinnamon. And it is the most full version of Linux Mint. Then there is also more robust and traditional one, Mate Edition which is going to be for less powerful computers, but it's going to be more stable. And then the last one is light, simple and efficient, the XFCE edition. This edition will be good for those who have like very old computer that doesn't have much hardware resources. For example, it could be an old laptop or netbook or even an old PC. If you would like to install it on that machine, I would recommend you go with the XFCE edition. Or if you think that your computer is pretty powerful, but not the latest one, you can go ahead and try the Mate Edition. But because I'm going to be installing it on the laptop with the Ryzen 4000 CPU, which is pretty powerful nowadays, I'm just going to go with the most popular Cinnamon Edition. But the installation process will be similar, so don't worry. If you choose another edition, you can still use this guide. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the Download button. Over here, as you can see, it says the size is 2.8 gigabytes, so it's pretty big. So just scroll down. As you can see, there is only 64-bit version available. There is no 32-bit versions available anymore. So you won't be able to install it on all the computers that only support 32-bit operating systems. But most likely, you're going to have the 64-bit operating system anyway. As you can see, there is a lot of locations you can choose from. So depending where you live, you can choose the closest location to you. And then it will be faster for download. But it doesn't really matter. You can actually click on any of these locations. and it is still going to get the exact same image. All right, let's go ahead and click on one of these locations and then we can download it. I'm just going to choose the first one here. Then you just got to choose the location where you want to save it. I'm just going to save it to the downloads and click save. As you can see, the download has started. I'm just going to click here. So it says it's going to be two minutes for the download. So I'm just going to fast forward it until it's complete and then we're going to continue. Okay, so the download is complete. Let's go to the next step. And the next step is going to be we need to download a program that we can flash this image onto the USB stick. For that, we're going to be using a Balena Etcher. So all you have to do, just go to the browser again and then type in Balena Etcher. And Balena Etcher is a software that allows you to write an image such as ISO to the USB stick. And it is mostly used for Linux images. So the website is going to be called etcher.balena.io. 
So just click on it. The next step, just click on the download. And here you can choose for which operating system you want to download it for. And if you're on Windows right now, you need to click Etcher for Windows. Or if you don't want to install it, just click on the portable one. Or if you, for example, on Mac OS, you click download for the Mac OS. If you're on Linux, well, if you're on Linux, you don't need to watch this video. So most likely you're on Windows. So let's go ahead and download this portable one. Actually, I haven't tried the portable one before. I always use the installer because I just keep it on my computer. But if you don't want it to be installed on your computer, you can just download the portable. So let's go ahead and try it. Just click on the download button. And again, we're gonna choose the location where we wanna download it. And we're gonna save it to the downloads and press save. All right, it's already saved. The next step, what we're gonna do, we're gonna flash the ISO to the USB stick. So the Linux Mint ISO that we have already downloaded, this one here, we gotta flash it to the USB stick using this program. And for that, we're gonna need at least a four gigabyte USB stick. In my case, I don't even have such small USB stick anymore. And the smallest one I have right now is 128 gigabyte. So I'm just gonna be using that USB stick. So go ahead and plug in the USB stick to your computer. All right, there we go. So as you can see, I have got this huge USB stick, 114 gigabyte. Well, actually it's 128 gigabyte. But as you know, usually Windows showing a little bit less. It doesn't show you the actual size. It only shows the size that you can actually use. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and close it. So the step number three, go ahead and start Balena Etcher. Let's minimize this window here. Okay, so now Balena Etcher has started. First, you need to choose the file you want to flash. And the file that you want to flash is going to be the ISO that we have just downloaded, which is going to be in the downloads. And this is going to be the Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon 64-bit. So just click on it and click open. Now you need to select the target, which is going to be the USB stick that we're going to be using to flash this ISO. And as you can see, the actual size is even a little bit more. It's 3.03 gigabytes. Then select target. And as you can see, I only have one USB stick available. So we're just going to choose it. And then click select. And also another tip, before you flash the ISO to this USB stick, make sure that there is no important files on your USB stick because once you flash the ISO, it will format the USB stick and all the files will be removed from the USB stick. So if there is any important files to you, don't do that. Copy them before you flash this ISO. Otherwise, they'll be completely gone and you probably won't be able to recover them. After that, go ahead and click flash. There we go. So the flash has started. It's probably going to take a few minutes before it's done, depending on how fast your computer is. In my case, it's saying about one minute to go. But anyway, while it's flashing, I would like to share with you my thoughts, why I decided to go with Linux and try it out. Well, first of all, because Linux is free. You don't have to pay for it. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, it is free. You don't have to spend a penny on it. Another thing, you can have a lot more control over Linux than Windows. For example, you can disable updates if you like. Unlike Windows, you cannot disable updates. And there is way more viruses on Windows than on Linux. There's also viruses made for Linux nowadays, but it's way safer and there's way less viruses for it. And plus, you have a lot more control over Linux than Windows. Anything that's done on Linux, you need to enter the password. Unlike Windows, everything is done automatically, so you don't really have any control over it. Linux also has very great support for its users, so this is another great feature. But anyway, the flash is almost done. Let's go ahead and continue with our installation. So the image is already finished flashing. Now it's validating the image, and we're almost done. Okay, so now when we flash this ISO onto this USB stick, let's go ahead and close this program. And if we go to my computer, as you can see, this drive is not going to be recognized in Windows environment because it has a totally different file format than Windows. So it won't be recognized under Windows, which is good because most viruses work under Windows. They won't be able to even do anything with Linux file systems. So this is good safety feature. But anyway, you won't be able to use this USB stick until you format it. But anyway, once it's done, we can go ahead and remove this USB stick. Let's go ahead and check if we can remove it as normal. And yeah, so you get to safely remove it. 
because if you don't safely remove the USB stick, sometimes it can cause problems with your USB stick and you won't be able to use them later. So safely remove it first. And now when it's ready to be removed, you can pull it out. Go ahead and plug in the USB to the computer that you're going to be installing Linux Mint on. Then go ahead and power on the computer or laptop. And if it doesn't start loading to the USB stick, and for example, it starts loading to the operating system that you currently have on your laptop or PC, then what you can try to do, you can try to press different key combinations. Depending on what laptop or computer you have, you can try this combination such as F2, F7, F8, F12, Delete, Tap or Escape. It all depends on different manufacturer. They assign different key combinations to enter the boot device menu. Depending on what computer you have, there might be different keys. So hopefully one of these keys will work for you. Once we get loaded from the USB stick, we got to choose Start Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon 64-bit. So the first option from this boot menu and then press enter. It's going to start loading Linux Mint from the USB stick. So basically, if you're looking to get a USB stick that you can take with you anywhere you go and you're going to have an operating system on that USB stick, we all done. You got this USB stick. Now you can use it on pretty much any computer you have and you have the operating system on this USB sticks. As you can see, there are a variety of different programs here. You can choose from different accessories, different graphics programs like you can be doing drawing, you can connect to the internet, you can be doing office. But one minor disadvantage of this option is that everything you do on the USB stick is not saved. So every time you restart the computer, everything will be gone and you're going to have to start again from scratch. But if you want to go ahead and continue and permanently install Linux Mint on your laptop or computer, this is going to be the next step. And we're going to proceed with the full installation of Linux Mint on the computer. Okay, so to start the installation process, we need to just click on this icon over here in the top left corner, install Linux Mint, just double click on it. This will allow you to do a permanent installation of Linux Mint on your laptop or computer. Just gotta wait till it loads up. And there we go. So the first step, we gotta choose the interface language that we wanna use. I'm just gonna choose English and press continue, but you can choose any other language that you like. The next step is gonna be your keyboard layout. I'm also going to stick to English keyboard layout, but you can also choose a different keyboard layout or you can add another keyboard if you like, but you can change it later as well. So I'm just going to stick with only one keyboard right now and press continue. Okay, so the next step is very important. It's called the multimedia codex. You can skip this step and just press continue, but I'd highly recommend that you install multimedia codex because then everything will be working right out of the box and you don't have to do all the installation later but to do that you're going to need internet connection so you can either use a wire connection or you connect to the wi-fi i have already connected to the wi-fi over here to do that you just got to click on the bottom right corner there's an icon for the internet and you got to choose your wireless network if you don't have a wired connection and then once you click on it enter your password and click connect so this is very simple i already have it connected and I will also highlight install multimedia codecs. Then another important step is going to be the configure secure boot. This is a password that's going to allow you to authorize any installation for the third party software and drivers. And I highly recommend installing the password as well because you're going to need it at the later point. And if you don't install it, you won't be able to install any third party drivers. And a lot of graphic drivers and Wi-Fi drivers, they're proprietary and you're going to need to download them from like, let's say NVIDIA or AMD. So make sure to set up this password as well and then press continue. Okay, so this step is going to allow us to choose the installation type. So you can either decide to erase the whole disk and install Linux Mint or you can do something else. Something else means you can install it alongside with other operating system. For example, if you already have Windows installed on your computer you can also install linux mint alongside with windows also this option something else will allow you to choose a specific partition you want to install linux but in this case we're not going to do that and actually i already have another video how to install linux mint alongside with windows so if you want to check it out i'm going to put a link in the description so make sure to check it out if you like in this case, I just want to do a complete installation of, of only Linux. I don't want any windows on this laptop. So I'll just do a clean installation of Linux Mint. That's it. But as you can see, it says warning. This will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, everything from the disk. So if you're installing it over an existing operating system, 
make sure you have already copied everything before you start this process. Otherwise, it will delete all these files and then you won't be able to recover them. Let's check what the advanced features are. The advanced features allow you to encrypt the disk, but we're not gonna do that. So right now it's all ready to go. Let's go ahead and click install now. As you can see, there is a warning that's saying that everything will be removed on the computer if you continue. So make sure that there is no important data on the computer that you need. Copy it before you proceed with this installation. Otherwise, it will be absolutely gone. So I don't really have anything important saved there. So I can go ahead and delete it and just press continue. Then you need to create a name for your computer. Let's go ahead and call it Balsar Tech. And then it automatically created the computer name. And we also need to create a password. You can choose to log in automatically, or you can choose to require the password every time you log in. And you can even encrypt the home folder. I'm just gonna choose login automatically so it doesn't require the password every time I log in and press continue. There you go, the installation has started. So we'll just wait until it's finished and then we can check it out. The installation might be taking about five minutes, so it shouldn't be very long. But of course, depending on what computer you have, it might be taking longer. So we'll see how long it will take. I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward it to the end so we can see once it's finished. There we go. So the installation is complete. We're gonna need to restart it. And then we can start loading not from the USB stick, but from the computer itself. So you need to go ahead and remove the USB stick right now. And after that, go ahead and press enter. And there we go. So Linux has started loading. Yep, everything is working. This is the first start for Linux. Now, as you can see, we get in the welcome screen and this welcome screen will let us configure Linux Mint a little bit more with our first start. So let's go ahead and configure it first and then we can use it. All right, there we go. So Linux Mint is installed and this is our welcome screen where we can get some first step customize Linux Mint a little bit. So we can go ahead and check out the first steps. As you can see, you can customize desktop colors. You can create system snapshots. You can check the driver manager, make sure all the drivers get the latest updates. But since we connected to the internet during the installation process, most likely it has already checked all the drivers. And yes, like you see, there is no drivers needed. Also, there is an update manager you can run. If there's any security updates, software updates, you can uh, run any of those updates. Then there is a software manager, which is a really great feature where you can get a whole bunch of different software. And honestly, Linux is getting more and more software for their users that you can use pretty much every day. There's probably only a few of the software that not available on Linux and only available on Windows. And most of them are like Adobe software, which is for editing, which is not available on Linux. But you can also use an emulator, which is called the Wine, and you can install it on Linux. And then you can use Windows based programs on Linux. But as you can see, there is like a huge variety of different programs that you can install. Let's say Blender. This is uh, for working with 3D graphics. Stellarium, that's for your night sky. Then Audio City. You have different players like VLC. This is a very nice player. Then also you get in uh, Skype, Telegram. Yeah, everything you can think of. They're really nice. So definitely you get in a lot of different stuff you can choose. Then you can also read through the documentation. There is a new release features, release notes. And of course there's help. If you need some help, you can always talk to somebody on the web forums or you can even use this chat room that will help you pinpoint the problem if you're facing some sort of problem that you cannot resolve. So yeah, this is it guys. Everything is working. I'm really happy. It has picked up the drivers for the Wi-Fi. It has picked up the driver for the graphic card. My screen is looking great. If I go to right click and go to the display settings, as you can see, the resolution is full HD for this laptop. Yeah, everything is here and by the way, Linux Mint has a lot more settings available than Windows, so you're gonna like it, I hope. And um, yeah, go ahead and investigate whatever you like. But this is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, of course, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more interesting, helpful videos for Linux. And then if you have any comments, questions, of course, 
drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to read those comments and help you if I can. But this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.